Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is the kind of modern retro retro revival of the classic beat-em-up franchise. And if you're looking for a solid, yet not too out-of-the-box experience, then this is definitely a must-play. Shredder's Revenge basically takes place in a world where we basically got a new TMNT, I guess this would be either four or five, if you count the Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis. But this is a classic beat-em-up through and through with a few unique changes here and there. The different characters with up to six player multiplayer, which I don't have any footage of it here, but I did do it after the stream, is a lot of fun. We had a little bit of connection issues here and there, but for the most part, it was just six player rumbles from screen to screen. Each one of the game's six characters, of course, the classic Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles, you have Splinter, April, and of course, Casey Jones as an unlock, have different stats in terms of attack, speed, and range, as well as slight changes on their different specials. One of the big changes compared to the original classic ones is that your specials no longer require you to use health in order to activate. The blue meter underneath the score is your special gauge, and it fills up as you do attacks without taking damage, or you can use a, about like a three second taunt to instantly fill up one meter, as you can see right there. And this becomes a major point when it comes to surviving some of the later game challenges, which I'll come back to in a few minutes. The game features both story and arcade difficulty. Story mode is kind of a progression style where characters will level up, they'll gain slightly different specials, but their stats other than health will remain the same. Arcade mode is just a complete run through the game's 16 levels, you have three continues, you run out, it's game over. Now, the general feel of the game is definitely on point. I, I haven't said yet, but I, of course, have to call out the aesthetics as being fantastic for Shredder's Revenge. The art is expressive. There's loads of Easter eggs and bonus stuff just like hidden in the backgrounds. And of course, the voice actors, the original ones for the Turtles are back, as well as some classic or very reminiscent classic music, and I could listen to the uh, remix of the TMNT theme, I think, all day long. Now, with that said, as I said at the opening, Shredder's Revenge doesn't really play itself too far outside the box for the particular design of the TMNT beam ups You'll still have to make heavy use of controlling the stage and knowing when to use your special. With that said, if you're looking for something that is really taking beat-em-ups in a new direction, I don't think this game is going to go that far. And I do have a few nitpicks that I want to discuss, but we're going to talk about that after this quick break. And as always, if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then check out my game design books. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres, with free-to-play coming in 2022. Much like the classic game, Shredder's Revenge does have some kind of pain points and frustration as we get later into the titles. One of the things that we found was there are several cases where enemies seem to have input reading in terms of they will just automatically counter an attack, such as with jump attacks. This was something that we noticed quite a bit with some of the Foot Clan characters. As you get into the back half of the challenges, you're going to start running into a lot more enemies who seem to be able to attack so fast that even if you are the one who tries to engage them first, their attack will come out before yours. And for extra players, this isn't that big of a deal. One of the big things that will make life easier for you is knowing when to use your special move. The jump special will pretty much one shot, I think, almost any normal enemy in the game. As we get later in, the game will introduce, of course, more bosses, more enemies, that kind of thing. And again, it does pretty much do what it's said on the box. This is a classic TMNT beat em up. But 
in that time since the original or since TMNT4, we've seen beat-em-ups try to do different and original things. One of my favorites, of course, is Fight and Rage. And if you're hoping again to see anything new, something that you have not seen before in a beat-em-up or a TMNT style one, Shredder's Revenge doesn't go that far. And it is kind of a shame in that respect. Now, with that said, developers have been hitting at DLC and post-release support, and we don't know at this time what that could mean. Whether it could be more stages, more characters, that kind of thing. But I do really hope that they use Shredder's Revenge as a foundation for more content. Streets of Rage 4's roguelike mode was an unexpected joy, and I think something like that could work here. And I also really hope that this gives developers, I guess, proof that beat ups are not dead or a relic of classic games. And we see more developers experiment with it. Maybe the Fight and Rage developer will get motivated to make a sequel. We never know. But all in all, this is a solid game for both single player and multiplayer. I would say it is very much easier in multiplayer than it is single because of the fact that you can kind of step back and charge your super and have somebody just be the distraction. But with crossplay and of course drop in, drop out multiplayer, there should be plenty of reasons to have a gang, whether it's local or online to play with. And if you are a fan of the classic TMNT games or just beat em ups in general, this is easily a no brainer of a game to play. And if you haven't played Fight and Rage yet, I would strongly suggest making that your next one after this one to kind of see where someone could go further with beam up design. So with that said, I would like to thank the developer for giving me a press key to check this one out. If you are new, do all the liking and subscribing and commenting. And you let me tell your game for a future piece, please get in touch. Be sure to visit the Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where he's in the art and science of games.